So, uh, hey guys, last week you liked my video, my uh, tutorial on how to place nuts. So, as I promised, this week we're gonna do, if I get this damn thing off, tri-cams. So let's take a closer look at exactly what makes a tri-cam, and then I'll find places like I did last week where I can show you how to place these. So let's just hop right into it, shall we? Okay, so the tri-cam, let's take a close look at what makes a tri-cam. So basically, essentially, it's a piece of webbing attached to a metal, and it's attached to this piece of metal by this push rod, this rod that's pushed right through the piece of metal, press fit, and that's what attaches it to this. Now, the tri-cam has two modes. It has a passive mode, and it has an active mode. The way you're looking at it right now, if you were sticking in a crack like this, which would essentially be like using a weaker nut, this thing, in passive mode holds up to three kilonewtons. In active mode, it holds up to five. A average leader falls between two and five kilonewtons. So you wouldn't really, this wouldn't really be bomber, okay? It wouldn't be bomber in uh, in this mode. But anyway, that that'd be like using as a nut. Maybe you didn't have a nut that's right this that's just this size, and you have to put it in in passive mode. But usually, if you could get it in passive mode, you get in active mode. Okay, so what's active mode? Well, here's where the magic happens. If you turn it like this, it now has a camming action. So when the weight gets pulled, it cams up. So if we stuck this in, let's say a crack like this, and which is not really the greatest placement, but let's say it's in a crack like this, you took a fall, it cams up on that and becomes taller, which wedges it in there and keeps it in there. Now you could put it like this, and you could put it like this. If you put it like this, you could potentially get less wear on this sling because this is could be going over an edge here so it could potentially get less wear on it but i find that it kind of walks around a little bit more like that so i mean i generally like to put it in like this it feel it just feels better to me but uh yeah so it goes it could go like that or like that and then when this gets pulled it wants to stand up wants to go up and just wedges it in there. See how it's pushing this rock up in the air? If it was, if it was a, an actual wall of rock, it couldn't do that. So it'd pull up and it, it'd get pressured. Okay, so anyway, let's uh, look around and I'll find some places where these things really shine. So let's go look around and see if I can find some places. Put this in. Actually, I think I lied. This black one, which is a quite a bit, quite a bit smaller, is actually rated three to five kilonewtons. These pink ones are actually rated a little bit more, maybe seven or nine. So these are a little bit more bomber. But anyway, this is where they really shine, in pockets. Because pockets might be a little bit too skinny, a little not, not wide enough for a cam, and you can't get a nut in there. But a tri-cam, put it in its active mode, and we get it right in here, there seems to be a little lip at the top of the roof of this thing. If we get that tooth behind that lip, and then uh, get that right set in there, Bam, we got a pretty good placement. And the way you'd get that back out, if it was really jammed in there, is you grab your nut tool, wherever that is, you can grab your nut tool and you push in the bottom, or you could pull in the top, you could pull in the tooth sometimes. But anyway, you want to get it uncammed, and then you can get it out. But that's where cam, tri-cams really shine in pockets, especially if there's something at the front of that pocket, like a lip where you get this tooth behind it, Oh, that feels just so nice when that gets in there. Okay, so anyway, let's look at some horizontals because they work really well in horizontals as well. Here's another pocket where we have a great example of a tri-cam placement. Right here, we have a bit of a lip at the front of this pocket. If we get our tooth behind that lip, like so, it's now behind that lip there, and we give it a pull, what's happening now is that lip and that tooth is stopping it from pulling out. And the pressure, the force is pulling this up. So it's actually doing this. So it's forcing, it's putting the force at the top of the rock over here. So we give this a good pull, <clears throat> give this a couple of yanks, should set it in there real nice and tight. And we have a good tri-cam placement. Usually the rock is gonna dictate which orientation, whether sling up or sling down, webbing up or webbing down. Because if this uh, lip was up here, we'd want, want this flipped around so that this was catching on the lip. 
Okay, so let's see if we find something else. My last episode, you guys asked for examples of messing it up, how to mess it up. So here's a good example of how you'd mess it up. This cam's a little bit too small for this pocket. We're gonna stick it in there, and then we're gonna over cam it. You don't want it to be able to over cam. You don't want it standing almost straight up like this. It becomes pretty unstable like that, okay? It might hold like this, but then it could pop right out. So you want it to be where it's like this. You don't want it standing almost straight up like, like so. It might look like it might hold like that. You might be able to get away with it, but just a little bit of pressure and it could just fall out like so. Here's an example I found of this vertical crack here that you might want to use the tri-cam in its passive mode. We could put it in just like this, like we would a nut. Now you gotta remember though, when you put it in passive mode, you're sacrificing some of the strength. It's gonna be a couple kilonewtons less, but we could jam it in there. Then we have it in passive mode. You might still be able to use it in this crack and it's not passive mode <laughs> which should be like that jam that in there and there you go so there's a good example of vertical crack um, if you used it in its passive mode you might be able to get lower here which means you'd be able to get more loop hanging down here which is something you might want too Okay, next. Here's our last example, which is a little bit of a scary one. We have a pebble. This pebble here is what's holding this tooth back. So potentially, if you took a whipper on this, this pebble would pop off. This crack could definitely, would be definitely better to get some, a nice cam in there, some kind of uh, actual cam instead of a tri-cam. So this isn't the best placement. <laughs> this is like a, uh, what I would call a better than nothing placement. But uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't like that very much because this could potentially pop this little piece off and then fall down. It doesn't take much, too much pressure to get that off there too. But uh, yeah, better than nothing, right? <laughs> so, yep. Okay guys, so in this episode, you should learn how to quickly and correctly and incorrectly how to place a tri-can. If you like that, go ahead and leave a like, comment, subscribe down below. Um, if you wanna go give this a try, if you've never used one before, I would suggest picking up the pink one. I find myself using the pink one the most. I don't know why. It seems to fit in places the most for me. Uh, if you're brand new to climbing, don't go out and give it a try. Make sure you climb with someone that knows what they're doing. Experience is the safest thing a climber can have. I'll try to find, I'll try to find this pink one on Amazon and put it down in my Amazon store, and then you can see what the price is on it. Um, also, you can pick up some merch while you're down there in the... <laughs> down there in the description or whatever. So that's about it. That wraps it up. Have a good week, guys. Josh Perry, climbing out of here.